Calvary to save a wretch like me. I offer up His running of His precious blood that told me, and I repented all my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory! me and put me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and knew me and all my love is due me. He brought me to victory beneath a blessed floor. to see and then the cry there Jesus come on and my broken spirit and saw my Jesus came and brought to me a victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me We need a blessed flow. I am about a mansion. He has been for me in glory. I am about the streets of glory. Beyond the crystal sea. Father and our God, the eternal one, the one that lives upon the throne and he rules in the affairs of men. We have come again into your presence. Every broken spirit, we ask for healing in the name of Jesus. By the cleansing blood of Jesus, everyone in bondage, let them receive their freedom in the name of Jesus. The Bible says it shall come to pass in that day that the yoke upon the shoulder shall be broken by the anointing. The anointing of God is in the house this morning. Your presence is here with us. Let every yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Let lives be transformed in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. Let there be healing. Let there be encouragement. Let every life be touched in the name of Jesus. That at the end of the day, we will know that we have had an encounter with you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's have our seat. Praise the name of the Lord. Now this morning, I mean, we want to, the, the choir has actually summarized my message. You know, the spirit of the Lord is one. This morning, the message, the title of our message this morning says, Your victory is guaranteed. Your victory is guaranteed. Tell yourself, my victory is guaranteed. 
I will go to read three scriptures, and then we'll take it from there. Our, uh, our verse for the month, Romans 8, 37. Romans 8, 37, the Bible says, And yet in all these things, I will read for King New, King, uh, New King James Version. New King James Version, the Bible says, Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And I will read to us Job 14.1. Job 14.1, the Bible says, Man who is born of woman is of few days and full of trouble. Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21. The scripture says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with him on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down. With my father on his throne. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, brethren, this month has been tagged as our month of conquest. And conquest simply means victory. You know, from Job 14, 1 we read, Job said, A man that is born of a woman is full of troubles, and his days are few. Now, in other words, that tells us that every man upon the face of the earth is fighting one battle or the other. Every man, believers and unbelievers, is fighting one battle or the other. And what determines the outcome of a battle depends on who is with you. What determines the outcome of a battle depends on who is in your midst. No wonder the scripture says in Psalm 46, 1 and 2. Psalm 46, 1 and 2. The Bible says that God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in troubles. Are you in troubles? And you know God? He said, therefore, we shall not fear. We shall not fear. Why? Because God is our refuge and strength. He said, let the heart be removed. Let the earth be removed. And let the mountains be cast into the sea. Have you ever seen physical mountains being displaced from their location and being cast into the sea? Have you ever seen one before? But the scriptures is telling us, if that is the case, our heart is secured in the Lord. Why? Because it's our refuge and because it's our strength. No wonder Jesus said, he reassured us in John 16, 33. John 16, 33, Jesus told us, he said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you will have peace. Just as the choir sang. He said, it doesn't matter what you are going through. As long as you belong to Jesus, victory is your portion. He said, in me, you will have peace. He said, but in the world, you will have tribulation. But he now reassured us. He said, we should be of good shape. Why? Because he has overcome what? He has overcome the world. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe that somebody will be encouraged this morning. And the scriptures in Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, it says, be anxious for nothing. And no matter what you are going to say, be anxious for nothing. But he said, in all things. By what? By prayers and supplications, we should let our heart be made known unto God. Now, I want to read the scripture to you. Revelation 12, 7 to 9. Revelation 12, 7 to 9. The scripture says, something happened in heaven. The scripture says that in Revelation 12, 7 to 9, the Bible says, And war broke out in heavens. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan would deceive the old world. It was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Brethren, that tells us something. Battle precedes victory. We cannot have victory in any area of our life when we are not ready to fight the battle. The Bible says even in heavens, devil refused to leave the heavens. Why? Because in, in, in the beauty of heaven is beyond comprehension. But it was cast to the earth. And the moment it was cast to the earth, troubles and pains and tribulations and afflictions came upon the sons of men. 
But for a child of God, for someone that believes in Jesus Christ, victory is your portion. But for those that don't know God, they are already defeated. Because there's no way they can withstand the battles of life without the help of Jesus Christ. And in verse 11, let's read verse 11 of that same Revelation 12, 11. And the scripture says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. The, to the death. Why? You, they overcame me by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Brethren, that is our winning card. Praise the name of the Lord. If you belong to Jesus Christ, if you are a child of God, victory is guaranteed for you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter the challenges in your life. You know, believers, whether we like it or not, we, we have always had to face hardship in many forms. It may be in the form of illnesses or troubles or persecutions. But you see, at the end of the day, at the end of the tunnel, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. But you need many a times what we go through and the pains and the challenges in our lives sometimes can make us fear that we have been abandoned by Christ. And I believe that that can actually resonate with some of you. You are going through pains. You are going through afflictions. You are going through difficulties in life. You have done everything physically possible. Just like the, sister, the, the, the testimony of our sister. It says, she said she came to the prayer meeting. She did everything possible. Maybe you are in the same shoes today. But you know, and you, it appears as if the devil is telling you that you have been abandoned by God. Tell the devil you have not been abandoned by God. The, the Bible says in Isaiah 43 too. Isaiah 43, the Bible tells us that it said, when we pass, it said, when, not if. It said, when we pass through the waters, it said, it's, it's there with us. It said, when we pass through the waters, it's there, it said, I am there with you, through the rivers. It said, we shall not be overflowed. When you will overflow, when you pass through fire, what happens? It shall not touch you. This flame shall not scorch. Why? Because God is there in the midst of the, uh, the thing you are going through. I don't know what represents fire in your life. And it appears as if you are, it's about to, 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 to destroy you. I don't know what, what, uh, what represents the afflictions of life that you are going through. And it appears as if you are not going to overcome those challenges. But God is telling us today that he is there with us. I want to tell yourself, to encourage yourself, that no matter what I am going through, God is here with me. I want you to talk to yourself. Say, Father, I know you are with me in the midst of these challenges. Tell yourself, I know you are with me. I know I am not, I've not been forgotten. I know I have not been abandoned in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Job said in himself, in Job 41, he said, If every man that is born of a woman, his days are few and full of troubles. We all know what Job went through. In verse 14 of that Job 41, he said, he said If a man dies, shall he live again? He said, All the days of my hard time, I will wait till my change comes. Your change will come in the name of Jesus. Your change will come in the name of Jesus. You know, Job went through a lot. He lost his children. He lost his wealth. He lost his health. Have you ever seen a man that lost his children, his wealth, and his health in the same day, on the same day, or in, in a short period of time? It's not a common scenario, but Job, he lost his children, he lost his wealth, and he lost his, 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 his health. But the most painful part of it was that his friends, they erroneously accused him. They thought that the pain and the afflictions in his life was due to his great sin. But that wasn't the case. We all know the story. And that was very painful to Job. But you see, at the end of the day, and I know sometimes many of us, we also fall into the, in the same error. When people go through pains, we quickly jump into conclusion that, oh, maybe it's because of their sin. Maybe they have done something wrong. That's why they are going through those pains. But it's not always the case. 
But you know, at the end of the day, God was displeased with his three friends. And he rebuked them. But Job did something. But at the end of the day, when God decided, when, when Job learned his lesson, and God told his three friends, the Eliphaz, Bildad, and the Sofa, God told them that they should make an offering. They should take a bow and, and go to, to Job. And Job did something. The Bible says, in, in, let's read Job 42.10. Job 42.10. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. You know, he prayed for his friends. And when he prayed for his friends, God restored him. God gave him back all the things that he lost. We all know the rest of the story. But I know there's nobody in this, in this uh, auditorium that have gone through what Job went through. But in spite of the pains that he went through, he held on to God. And God restored him. God will restore you in the name of Jesus. No matter the challenges in your life, maybe it's concerning your health, maybe you, maybe you are struggling financially, maybe it's concerning your career, maybe it's concerning your children, maybe it's concerning your health. Maybe it's concerning your spiritual life. Maybe it's concerning your career. It doesn't matter what it is. Victory is your passion in the name of Jesus. If you belong to God, if you're a child of God, if you belong to Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter just as the choir sang the song, victory is your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God will restore you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You know, and one thing I also want us to know that there is nothing that happens to us without God's approval. There is nothing that happens to us without God's permission. I want us to read uh, I mean, Psalm 66, Psalm 66, 10 to 12. Psalm 66, 10 to 12. The Bible says, For you, O God, have tested us. Who is doing the testing? God. It said, For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. He said, you brought us into the net. Who did? God. He said, you, oh God, you brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through what? And through water. But what happened? But, bro, but you brought us out to reach fulfillment. He said, you, you, you we went through fire and we went through water. But at the end of the day, what happened? You brought us out to reach fulfillment. God will bring you out to reach fulfillment in the name of Jesus. God will bring you out to reach fulfillment in the name of Jesus. In other words, it will grant you victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, troubles and, difficult, and difficulties may come to us. But through Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. Life is not defined by your situation. Your life is not defined by the afflictions. Your, your life is not defined by what you are going through. Your life is defined by who you are in Christ Jesus. A treasure, a treasure child of the Heavenly Father. Tell yourself, I am a special child of God. I'm treasured by God. God said, because you are precious to him. He said, he will help you. That is the God talking to you. He said, you are the apple of his eyes. And if you are the apple of his eyes, what you are going through, just from the scriptures we have read, God will bring you out to reach fulfillment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God will bring you out to reach fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Now, God told the Israelites, he said, so the Bible said, God spoke. And it came to pass. When what God has to do is just to speak. God told the Israelites, He said, I am taking you into the promised land. He said, they, Their defense has departed from them. Indirectly, they, they, you will possess the gates of your enemies. God has spoken. But so, one thing, something happened, but when they got to the rest, something happened. But let's leave that because we know the story. But where I'm actually going, is what happened in Numbers 13. 
Numbers 13, God, they, they sent out 12 spies to the promised land. And the Bible says that 10 of them, they came back with negative report, right? And two of them came back with positive report. Now, let's analyze this. The 10 people that went there, they, the report they gave were actually true, right? They said they saw the giants. It is true. The city were fortified. It is true. They said they saw the, the sons of the, 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 the giants. It is true. But they, they got it wrong. And where they got it wrong was, I want us to read it, Numbers 13. Let's read Numbers 13, 31 to 33. Numbers 13, 31 to 33. Now, but the man who had gone up with, with him said, we are not able, let's start from verse 30, please. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Now, how did they make that assessment? Because they saw giants, right? Now, that's 33, 32. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Yes, it is true, they saw men of great stature, correct? Okay, they were reporting what they saw. Is that right? Now, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anna came from the giants. It is true, they saw the giants. And we bought, look at the statement they made. But we were like grasshoppers in our sight. And so we were in their sight. They got it wrong in this aspect. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, as children of God, as people that have been redeemed by the blood, the Bible says they overcame it by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. The scripture says that we should not be moved by what we see. We should not be moved by what we hear. But we should be moved by what? By the word of the Lord. Just as the choir son said, it doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what I am going through. I am on the winning side. God has spoken. He said that we are more than conquerors. In all these things, you know, in all these things, what are the, in all these things, if you read the preceding verses, if you have the time, we will, we will read those, those things. In all these things, in your afflictions, in your pains, in your challenges, in your failures, in your illnesses, in your tribulations, in all these things, you have to look beyond the things that you can see with your physical eyes. Because when you don't look beyond them, those things have the capacity to discourage you. They are, they are. You will live in unbelief. They saw giant, it is true, but God already told them. He has spoken. He said, their defense, had, or, uh, he said, he had already removed their defense from them. In other words, they are like, like they, are, they have already been defeated before them. But they refused to believe the word of the Lord. And they magnified what they saw beyond the almightiness of God. And because of them, God gave them death penalty in, 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 the, in the wilderness. They could not possess the gates of their enemies. Because of that, they lost victory. They could not have victory. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. I know there are people here that are going through tough times. I know there are people here that are going through challenges of life. As we have read, as long as you are a human being and you are alive, you will always always have troubles. But, but, victory is your portion. It doesn't matter. Those troubles cannot, they cannot overrun you because you are a child of God. 
They cannot overwhelm you because you belong to him. God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. But they got it wrong. They saw giants, but they said, but we are like grasshoppers. Because they did not put into consideration the awesomeness of their God. They did not put into consideration how mighty, how great, and how awesome their God was. But and as, as a result of that, they were defeated in the Red Sea. God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. You know, our mind is the zone of victory. You, 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 it, it's, that is the, the, the assault center of the devil, is our mind. The defeat or the victory, it starts in our mind. And no wonder the scripture says in, in Romans 12 that we should, we, should trans, we should be transformed by the renewal of our, of our mind. And how do we do that? Is by, by doing what? By studying the word of God. To know the, the counsel and the purpose of God for our lives. That is the only way our mind can be renewed. Because we are humans. We are human beings and there is tendency for the things that we go through to make us to doubt the, 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 the authenticity of the power of God. But the only way that can change, the only way power can change hands is by reading the word of God. To know the counsel and the purpose of God for our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly, we're going to quickly talk about factors that can affect victory. There are so many of them, but the list might be endless, but I've, come, I've been able to identify seven of them. The first one is salvation. Salvation. You know, if you are here, you are like a prodigal son, you have departed from the presence of God. Or you don't even know Jesus. You have not accepted him as a Lord and Savior. You cannot be victorious in life. You are already defeated. So the best thing for you today is to come to the cross. Is so if you are like a prodigal son, is to return to your to your father, to return to Jesus Christ. And if you are here, you don't know Jesus Christ, better return to him today because there's no way you can be victorious and lie without him. Just like he said to us, he said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you will have peace. There can only be peace in Christ Jesus. There's so much troubles out there. The world is full of troubles. The, the God is shaking the nations. It's only those that know, that believe in him, that we end well at this, at this end time. So, the first thing is to know Jesus Christ, to be connected to that source, to be saved. The second thing is God's presence. You know, I said to you earlier on that what determines the outcome of a battle, every man is fighting one battle or the other. But what determines the outcome of a battle is who is with you. So God's presence, let's read Joshua 7, 12. Let's read Joshua 7, 12. But God's presence, without God's presence, such a man will be defeated. Something happened to, to the Israelites, you know. They went against the, the, the city of Ai, and they were defeated before their, 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 their enemies. And the, uh, Joshua was surprised, and he went to God to find out why they were defeated before their enemies. And God told him, he said, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. But turn their backs before their enemy because they have what? Because they have become doomed to destruction. He said, neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy their cause from among you. God's presence departed from them. Why? Because somebody in their midst stole their cause thing. Achan is sinned against God. And because of that, God's presence departed from them. And because of that, they could not stand before their enemies. They were defeated by their enemies. So, for us to be victorious in life, we need the presence of God. We cannot afford to lose his presence. God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. God's presence is the key. Then, encouragement in the word of God. No, that's number three. Number three is encouragement in the word of God. You know what happened to uh, King David? The Bible says when he returned from, from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, the, uh, from the battle and he came to Ziglag. He said when he got to Ziglag, his, his wife, his children, and all his belongings, they were, they were already been uh, taken away by the enemies. And the scripture says that his, his, his people, they, they, were, they wanted to stone him. But something, David did something. The scripture said, all men, they cried until there was no more strength in them. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. David did what? He encouraged himself in the Lord. Brethren, in that situation you are in, except you encourage yourself in the Lord, 
it is so easy for you to be discouraged. As humans, we are prone to discouragement. Even Jesus Christ, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, let this cup be taken away from me. What happened? The scripture says that an angel of the Lord came to strengthen him. Even Jesus Christ. It was at the brink of being discouraged. But somebody, an angel of the Lord, there was a divine strength that was made available to him at that time of, of discouragement. And it was strengthened to carry on with the, 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 the destiny that was placed before him. You know, many a times we are prone to discouragement. So when you are discouraged, encourage yourself in the word of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The enemy of your soul, the enemy of my soul will not have your upper hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Then number four is unbelief. Unbelief. The Bible says that the people of Israel, they could not enter into their promise because of unbelief. And because of their unbelief, they could not get the victory that God promised them. The possession of, 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 of the gates of their enemies. They died in the wilderness because of unbelief. And just like the scripture we just read, we read that when the spies went out to, to, to see the land and they, they made a negative conclusion of themselves that they were not able to take over the, the land and they were destroyed in the wilderness. Unbelief. God has spoken. The Bible says, mark the righteous. The end of that man is peace. If you are a child of God, you are, you are righteous in him. So forget your pains. It doesn't matter the pains. It doesn't matter the challenges. At the end of the tunnel, there is always light for a child of God if you belong to him. So unbelief, unbelief. Unbelief is also a factor that can hinder us from receiving our victory. Praise the name of the Lord. Another thing that can hinder us, number five, is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You know, the scripture says in, in Job 42 verse 10 that God restored Job after he prayed, after he prayed for his friends. He forgave his friends. You know, it's not easy for someone to be wrongly accused. You know, it's not physically easy. You no, know, it's obvious that you did not do something and somebody was, uh, said that, oh, you did it. You did it. You're very present. It can be very painful, Right? But that was exactly what they did to Job. They accused Job wrongly for what he did not do. Maybe you are here, you are, you, are, you are struggling to let go. And maybe that is exactly what is holding you from being victorious in that particular area of your life. I want you to let go today. Receive the grace to forgive that person so that victory may return to you. So that victory may return to your tabernacle. Receive the grace of God this morning. Receive the grace of God to forgive that person. So that you may be victorious in that area of your life in the name of Jesus. And that shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Another factor, number six, is humility and the helper of destiny. Humility and the helper of destiny. Now, brethren, for some of us to be victorious in that particular area of our life, of our life, God needs to connect us with the helpers of destiny. And sometimes the people that God will connect us with to help us, they are people that maybe we can easily uh, despise them. We can easily despise them and look down on them. But maybe they are the people that God has divinely orchestrated to use. To give us victory in that area of our life. Just like he did to David. You know, David is the God. He, he, the Bible says after he lost everything, he, he inquired of the Lord. And the Lord told him, he said, can I pursue? He said, pursue them. And something happened. While they were going, they met an Egyptian, a servant. You know, they could have ignored that person. Right? Because he was also in pain. He was looking for his wife and his children and all the belongings that were already lost. But he did something. He called that servant. He, he attended to his needs. And know what? He, it was that servant that led them to where the enemies were. And that was how they were able to recover all. The Bible says David recovered all. Why? Through the help of that servant. If he had ignored that servant, maybe he could have lost that victory. God will help us in the name of Jesus. He will give us the wisdom in the name of Jesus. He will connect us with our helpers of destiny in the name of Jesus. He will give us the grace and the capacity to be humble, not to be proud, not to look down on others as, as if they are nobody. Praise the name of the Lord. And the seventh one is prayer. Prayer. The Bible says we must fight 
a good fight of faith. First Timothy 6.12. It says, fight a good fight of faith. And as I said to you, victory, victory, you cannot be victorious without battle. And for you to be victorious in the place of battle, you must be a man of prayer. Praise the name of God. That is the only way you can be victorious. And you need the grace of God to be a man of prayer. A prayerless person, a prayerless Christian will never, never be victorious in the place of, 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 of or in, in every area of life. Now, the final victory that we are trusting God for is what Jesus Christ said in Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21, Jesus said, he said to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with him on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He said to him who overcomes. That tells us something, brethren, that at the end of the day, it's not everyone that will overcome. We are talking about the final victory. The final victory of seeing Jesus Christ in glory. That is the ultimate victory. And how can we be victorious? Jesus Christ overcame. The Bible says that we do not have a high priest. I think Hebrews 4, 14, it says, 15, it says we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. But he was tempted in every point, and yet without what? Without sin. That is the ultimate victory. And that's the ultimate victory I'm trusting God for you and I to get. Because that's the only victory that can make us to walk on the street or, or, or on, the, on the street of the gold of heaven, on the street of heaven, which is made up of gold. That shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. And when we talk about the final victory, we are talking about to victory over flesh. Victory over sin. Victory over the world. Do you think it's easy to be victorious over the flesh? Do you think it's easy to be victorious over the world? Do you think it's easy to be victorious over the things that are going on around? It's not easy, brethren. It's not going to be easy without the power of prayer. It's not going to be easy except we are ready to fight. And when we are not ready to fight, we will be defeated. But that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. I want us to be on our feet. I want you to begin to talk to God this morning. I want you to talk to God, talk to God. Yes, we want to be victorious over the afflictions of life. Yes. But the final victory is to be victorious at the end of the day, to be able to reign with Jesus Christ in heaven. So maybe you are here this morning. You don't know Jesus Christ. You don't know what it means to be born again. You have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Brethren, you are already defeated. There is no way you can be victorious. Because you cannot be victorious by your own strength, by your own power. You need Jesus. You need the blood of the Lamb. You need the blood of Jesus Christ. To help you to be victorious. And you cannot have access to the blood of the Lamb if you are not born again. So the first step for you is to be born again. Or maybe you are born again, you are like a prodigal son. You have departed from the presence of God. I want you to return back to your maker. Return back to your maker. But if you are here, you are a child of God, you have given your life to Christ. I want you to talk to God. You know yourself, I don't know. You know the challenges in your life. You know the pains you are going through. You know those afflictions, those illnesses. Begin to talk to God to give you the grace. You see, God is sovereign. He can decide to heal you. He can decide to remove those afflictions as I'm talking to you now. But he can also decide not to remove those afflictions because he is trying to make you to come out as gold. Just as what we read, the Bible says God allowed us to go through afflictions. He said we went through pains, we went through fire, we went through water. But God brought us out to reach fulfillment. At the end of the day, God is a good and a godly father. He's a faithful father. He wants the best for you and I. Why can't you talk to him and say, Lord, in this affliction that I'm in right now, empower me. Empower me to continue to trust you, to continue to believe in you. So that I will come out as gold in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe you are here. It appears as if you are rising today, falling tomorrow in your walk with God. It's as if you are being battered by the enemy. I want you to talk to me and say, Lord, I am here this morning. You so see, one thing about God is that He's willing to help us. When we are ready and we are sincere with Him, He's there to help us. We cannot hide from God. 
let him know that you are his son, that you is your father. And let him know that you cannot help yourself. Talk to him and say, Lord, empower me to be victorious in this area of my life. Empower me to have the final victory so that I will be able to reign with you on the last day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Empower me, O Lord. I do not have any strength of my own. Help me, O Lord. Help me, O Lord, to reign with you. Brethren, that is the final conquest. That is the final victory. Victory to reign with Jesus Christ eternally. I want us to talk to him and say, Father, help us, Lord. Father, help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's appreciate God.